Hey, welcome folks, it's Bob here from BobsPlumbingVideos.com, helping you keep your cash in your pocket and the plumber out of your life. On this channel, I produce free plumbing tutorials on basic home plumbing repair. I go over the techniques that I use to get the job done fast. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, and any tools or materials you see that I use in any one of my videos will be listed in the description box down below. Now let's get to the video. Actually, folks, this video is not about how to solder copper tubing. It's about how to avoid burning your house down in the process. I had a YouTube viewer say to me that my how to solder copper tubing videos were boring. Could you please show us how to not burn our homes down in the process? You know what, pal? That's a great idea. And that's what this video is all about. Stay tuned. I'll see you on the inside. So guys, the fact of the matter is you're not always going to be out in the open when soldering. A lot of times you're going to be inside of a wall cavity, whether you're trying to put a shower body in or whether you're just trying to make a repair on a water line, you're going to be in between the studs. Those lines are going to be up against the wood and you're going to need something to protect yourself. You could have insulation. You could have all sorts of stuff inside that wall and any little stray spark is going to be not good because that stuff just gets out of the way and before you know it you're going to have yourself a fire now there are two products that i use i currently use now you'll see that black felt cloth hanging off the back of my little rig here and that product is made by this company here it's made by a company called Odie. it's called the flame protector now this here is made to be used dry but frankly i wet mine when i use it and I put it behind in between the wall and the piece of pipe I'm actually trying to solder and it works really really well protects the wood uh, and what I'll even do is I'll, I'll take a secondary one and if I pull out insulation and I have like a cavity over here that's continuing to go up I will put another one I will stuff it in the cavity so no stray uh, fumes or, or, or flames or little sparks or little pieces of dust will go up above the other product that I use, uh, and I don't use it that often, but sometimes there are spots where I can't get that cloth. And the other product I use is something called Cool Gel, made by a company called LACO. It's a heat barrier spray. And if you spray this on the surrounding areas, it'll keep uh, everything from uh, being affected by the heat. The thing is with this, you have to work relatively fast. As soon as you spray it on, you have to get going and get soldering and because once it dries out, it, it tends to lose its, its ability to, to retard the heat. So what I'm going to do now is just jump into this next frame here and we will, uh, I'll give you a live demonstration actually of, uh, you know, how these things really work. I'm not going to do any soldering. I'm just giving you a scenario here. As you can see, you see how close that copper is up against the, um, uh, the piece of wood here and that presents a problem and I got to tell you a lot of guys most guys are using uh, a tip that I'll bring up in my next frame uh, which is quite big and probably a little overkill for half inch tubing but uh, you know in a case like that I do use a small tip but in any way stand by and I will show you the tip that typically most guys are using uh, with their torch. Now this is my typical turbo torch regulator. Uh, now this is an older regulator. They're still available. Uh, I just prefer them. They work for me. A lot of guys like the self-igniting versions, but I like the old, uh, the older uh, style turbo torch uh, regulators. And these take uh, a variety of tips, but the most common tip you're going to see on these regulators is this tip right here. And this tip is is called their uh, there's a it's an st3 and this i've done got up to inch and a quarter tubing with this um tip it's quite large it produces quite a big uh flame and you know when you're working in small spots like this which i will show you it tends to get all over the place and uh, you know even more reason for using the spray gel or using the uh, flame protector but what I like to use on half inch tubing, small tubing, even three quarter inch tubing is my ST1 tip. It's a very small tip, doesn't create a large, large flame. And it just makes life easier 
when I have to get into small spaces. So uh, I'm going to now put these tips on the regulator. I'm going to put each one on individually. I'll show you what happens, and then we will figure out how to keep your house from burning down. So as you can see, they give you holes in this little pad here, and I tacked a couple of drywall screws to help it hang up, and I actually draped it around the corner. So this will represent being in between some wall studs. And as you can see there, you know, I have a joint that I would have to solder. So I, like I said, most guys are using this giant ST3 tip, and I believe it's kind of like overkill. It's really, really, uh, you know, overkill as far as the flame goes. What I use, I'm going to take this off for a second. I use my ST1 tip. And my ST1 tip is much smaller, and I find that it'll work for half inch or three quarter copper. And it gets the job done well, and especially when I'm in between, you know, studs. I, I want to minimize the amount of flame I'm throwing in there. So. As you can see here, and look at the wood, look at the wood going now. I wet my felt pad. They say you don't have to, but I wet mine. And what I'm going to do is, I will shut this off, and I'm going to take this felt off. Let me slip this off here just to show you how, you know, the wood, the wood is relatively unscathed. Now, the thing is this, if you don't have one of these and you would rather use the gel, the thing with the gel is this, folks, you have to get to work right away because as the gel starts to dry, it actually loses its ability. And so a lot of guys will come in here and uh, you simply, you spray this stuff on here and you just liberally spray it on. It's a gel. And then what you'll do is get your flame here. And you can go ahead and see what you're soldering. I don't know if you can see this, but Nothing's happening to the wood. It's actually protecting the wood. So let me put the flame now where I don't have the gel. Check this out. Look at this, folks. Look at this. Now look at this. Truly an amazing product. So these are currently the two products that I use. I probably use most of the time my uh, my uh, my uh, OD cloth here. And again, I, I wash mine, I wring it out, and I generally will drape it behind where I'm soldering, if I have the room. Now, if the pipe is slapped right up against the wall, obviously I don't have the room, then I'm going to come out and I'm going to get my cool gel. I'm going to do my thing. But folks, these are must-have tools if you're going to be getting in between the wall soldering again if you're working in a cavity and you had to pull some insulation out and you're working uh you know kind of relatively low or if you pulled insulation from the top i highly recommend you take your uh, your felt pad and you cover or you shove it up above the cavity to prevent any little sparks uh, or cinders from flying up because folks it happened to me I thought I was going to have a heart attack. That's the one time in my career I was thanking Jesus that uh, I had liability insurance, although this was uh, like six condos in a row, and I don't think I was covered. Uh, I didn't have those kind of limits for total loss. So, folks, there you go. This is how to avoid burning down your home while soldering copper tubing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, uh, please come back, visit me, subscribe to the channel, and uh, yeah, that's it. Just be very, very careful. Be aware, folks. You can burn a house down in the blink of an eye. Again, folks, these are the products I currently use. 
On the left there, I used the Cool Chill by Leiko. I used the OD Flame Protector uh, along with my Turbo Torch, my Map Gas. And of course, I am soldering half inch and three quarter inch tubing with my ST1 tip. Now I'll leave links in the description down below this video for all these products in case you guys are interested. There are other companies that also make these flame protectors. Um, I believe there's a, 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 a place called The Felt Store and they make a larger 12 by 12 version and I'll leave the link uh, for them also down in the description box below. But if you guys are going to be doing any soldering in between walls, folks, these products are a must, no question. And in addition, I don't have it here. Get yourself a basic fire extinguisher. God forbid things get out of hand. I always carry one with me. I take it in the room with me because you never know, folks, when things can go wrong. It happened to me once and it scared the living daylights out of me. So folks, how would you have handled a job like that? I always love to learn new techniques. Some of the best secrets come from my subscribers. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you haven't checked out the No Brainer Home Plumbing Inspection Checklist where I walk you room by room and point out potential plumbing disasters, you can check that out in the link below or the cards up above. Don't forget to get over to bobsplumbingvideos.com and get your free seven secrets the seven things you shouldn't have to pay a plumber to do i want to thank you guys for stopping by bobplumbingvideos.com it's my honor to uh be of service to you i will see you next time in the next video stay well and happy plumbing